when their findings don't fit his business model. When they don't like the message, they disparage the messenger. At my own child's school, Mountain View Elementary in Collingwood, Ontario, we bypassed the opinions of these business people and we went right to the source like a journalist would. We asked the mothers if their kids were healthy and we got a consistent answer from about half of them. For 18 months, they'd been in and out of doctor's offices with a range of neurological symptoms. By coincidence, it was 18 months when the school installed the Wi-Fi. And we found out that at least four children developed erratic tachycardia that confounded their doctors and they were wearing heart monitors to school. The older children, who were a little more aware of their bodies, told us they had blackouts in certain areas of the school. One even said he couldn't hold a pencil inside the school. And these were all symptoms that occurred daily at school and disappeared on weekends and holidays. And we found out that the school board had installed a wireless internet system powerful enough to run 300 computers at once, and they thought it was awesome. There are only seven computers in this school using the system. The parents of the affected children pay for hardwired connections. Kids could feel healthy at school again. But the Simcoe County District School Board said no. They said the children must be exposed to Wi-Fi at school. Even the children who were sick and presented to the school board themselves were told no. You may not plug your computer into the wall. You must sit all day in a sea of microwave radiation. Their reason, safety code is it's safe. Safety code six says we don't have to listen to your complaints. But safety code six is an excuse for everything. It was the only thing they had. They wouldn't tell us when it was installed. They wouldn't give us access to attendance records to try to figure it out for ourselves when it started. We wrote to the school board officials, public health officials, cabinet ministers. We did all the due process that you're supposed to do, and they all received the same cut and pasted answer. Safety code six says we're wrong. There are no health effects. Two children have dropped dead in Simcoe County schools since Wi-Fi was installed. Their hearts simply stopped beating. One was named Jenny. One was a little boy named Chase. It's curious that but this would happen twice to children just over 10 years old. There are only 50,000 students in the entire school district. I did the research to find out normal and abnormal. Turns out the estimate is about one in 1.3 million for childhood cardiac arrest. This was 20 times higher than expected. 20 times far exceeds the level of a suspected environmental influence. And it should have been examined. It should have triggered a public health investigation but it was only two kids, not a high number. Then it happened again. In another Simcoe County school, to a 13-year-old, he dropped from cardiac arrest in the schoolyard. Lucky for him, he was revived by a defibrillator after someone called 911. He was evacuated to Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto and had a pacemaker installed in his heart. Then within the year, it happened again in another Simcoe County school to a 16-year-old boy. He was brought back to life by his gym teacher using CPR, evacuated to sick kids and got a defibrillator installed in his heart. This was four kids with cardiac arrest. It brought the observed rate of in juvenile cardiac arrest in Simcoe County Schools to 40 times the expected. The only response by the Simcoe County School Board has been to install defibrillators in 100% of our schools. I alerted the Simcoe County Public Health Department about an illness cluster in our school that I believe deserved, pardon me, deserved investigation. I was told that according to Safety Code 6, this was impossible and did not warrant investigation. So as a trained reporter and a very experienced one, I read Safety Code where it said no one had to investigate a rash of unusual symptoms emerging after the installation of a new technology. I noticed a critical statement at the beginning of the document that we're all talking about here today. And I'll quote from page three of Safety Code 6 in case you haven't read it. In a field where technology is advancing rapidly and where unexpected and unique problems may occur, this code cannot cover all possible situations. But that's not how it The levels of safety were determined three decades ago and are being applied to a different world. The 21st century school is awash in microwave radiation. Children don't like to stay home from school. The special interest groups who call themselves skeptics say it's all in their heads. So how would they scientifically explain erratic tachycardia measured on a heart monitor? A child's heart moves from 68 beats per minute 
to 200s per minute in a single beat. How is that heart monitor measuring something that's in the child's head? One parent asked if her son could be moved to the back of the class, away from the transmitter, because he had a headache. He left the house every morning, healthy, and developed headaches shortly after sitting down at his desk. The teacher said no. The school board told him he's not allowed to accommodate any student based on an illness from Wi-Fi because it doesn't exist. His mother removed him from school permanently. This kid doesn't go to school anymore, as a mother would, who instinctively protects her children. This nine-year-old boy became one of many in Simcoe County, including my own, who didn't go to school anymore, because this little boy can't tolerate the microwave radiation, despite Health Canada's promise. Finally, the school board measured the levels of microwave radiation, and I'm sure this question is popping up in your mind right now. What was the measurement? Their goal, of course, was to compare the levels in the school to safety code six, which we questioned. We questioned these levels, and we believe that they're inadequate. But they, they, they were going to measure against safety code six, probably so they could shut us up once and for all, we were causing a bit of trouble, as you can imagine. Except what happened shocked even the school board. The very first location where they measured exceeded the microwave levels that trigger heating reaction. It exceeded the upper threshold of safety code six by 34%, and I'll be happy to supply you with this document. So we were right. Our kids were sick at school, but nowhere else. There was no mold problem. There was no recent renovation, chemical building materials. Only a newly installed massive Wi-Fi system. They measured and found the radiation created by the Wi-Fi exceeded safety code six thermal threshold by 34%. And that explained why my son came home from school with red hot ears every day. He was being cooked by microwaves. School Wi-Fi operates at 2.4 gigahertz, the same frequency as a microwave oven. So did they shut it down? Did they evacuate the school? Did they alert the teachers? The parents, the students, no. No, the Simcoe County District School Board kept it quiet. They told no one. They downplayed the results as insignificant and failed to tell the parents who were begging answers. When we finally found out about the test, that we were right, they changed their approach to Safety Code 6. They now said that Safety Code 6 upper limits can be exceeded 50 times. So they relied on Safety Code 6 until it became inconvenient and now they disregard it. They will expose our children to as much radiation as they want in order to connect seven computers to the internet. No matter if kids are too sick to, to go to school, no matter if kids drop dead in their gyms, no matter if their own metric of what is too much radiation has been exceeded in a school where kids are commonly wearing heart monitors. This is real. You can look this up in the newspapers. Fast forward three years. My kids are safe. A local private school decided to dismiss Health Canada, take its Wi-Fi out to protect the children. And I have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to enroll them when we have a perfectly good public school system. Because the school that my kids go to chooses to keep them safe, while the public school system chooses to intentionally expose them to microwaves that exceed safety code six limits. A grade eight boy from school had to leave recently because he developed pancreatitis. He's 13. I've been told by doctors who are pediatricians that they've never seen it. A grade eight boy in the next school over developed cancer recently. Is it because of the Wi-Fi? Well, nobody knows because nobody's going to check. Not even when the kids drop dead in their gyms are they going to check. So why is it that nobody pays attention to this obvious problem? I submit that Health Canada is manipulating the system. I've seen their officials mislead reporters on national television stating that there is no evidence of biological effects of microwave radiation below thermal levels when there is plenty of evidence. Stating that kids and fetuses can tolerate 50 times more radiation than the thermal threshold. Well, there's no evidence for that. Not anywhere in the literature. I've had serious biologists, physicists tell me that Health Canada officials look like fools on this subject. Part of my five-year journey for the truth in this matter has led me to several medical conferences. There are doctors gathering annually in the United States who are grappling with the increasing number of patients in their offices with sudden onset chronic illness. So far, they report that the symptoms can abate if they're able to turn off their newfound wireless devices. But it's tough when the entire health system is perpetuating the lie that their symptoms are fake based on the deeply flawed document that we're discussing today. 
because safety code six has fallen behind the times. You've heard only from a small fraction of them today. The Globe and Mail newspaper reports that Women's College Hospital in Toronto is admitting five new patients a month into their environmental health clinic. The complex chronic disease program in Vancouver states that they are overwhelmed by medical referrals for electrical sensitivity and they can't keep up. These are both government funds using government funds to examine and diagnose the very illnesses that safety code six says can't exist. And that's largely because the weight of evidence model is weighted in favor of science paid for by the wireless industry. As you all know, science can be manipulated. But cardiac arrest, two kids who dropped dead in Simcoe High Schools weren't faking it. It wasn't in their head. The two who were revived aren't imagining the devices implanted in their little hearts. Those are real. What I urge of all of you is to rise above the mudslinging and the pretend science and be the ones who finally show integrity after all this time. You might think your task is limited in scope, but you are in a unique position to provide a tool to the lone voices on school boards who might want to take precautionary action. You could suggest that dramatically safer standards be set in places where children are forced by law to spend six hours a day for their entire childhood. Right now, the entirety of Canada's youth are exposed to levels of microwaves that, if described as an experiment, would not pass an ethics committee. You can't gather data by exposing children to a classified possible carcinogen, but we do it every day in every Canadian school without collecting any data. If anyone would make the argument it can safely spray any amount of pesticide on any person for any amount of time, although that was once thought to be okay. And that's the current government thinking with microwave radiation. The arc of this public health disaster is still on its upswing. Today you have the opportunity to tip it in the other direction. Simply let Health Canada know that stricter safety standards are required for children and pregnant women. Let them know they should ignore any science sponsored by the wireless industry and start relying on independent scientists. Children know one thing instinctively, that it's wrong to tell a lie. As long as we pretend no one is suffering, this entire process is a lie. Let's start acting like children. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you, you made a comment when you quoted from Safety Code 6. You seriously think this panel has not read Safety Code 6? I don't think that for a minute, sir. Well, that's what you said. You said I apologize in, if in I offended you case, on that. Is, is, this your, read it, you said. is this your only comment on my speech? Part of it may have been rhetorical. You may have zoned in on that a little bit. Excellent. Any comments? I just have a question. You mentioned that there was a report, reported case of a school that had exceeded safety code six. Yes. Reporting. Would you like the report? I'd like to get it. Yes, please. If you look at the page I've handed you, the circle, they valued this experiment where one equals the upper threshold of safety code six, and that measurement was 1.34. Now, I'm a manufacturer, and I have to adhere to certain rules of the Canada Standards Association and Underwriters Laboratory for my products. I'm very aware of what safety testing is about. When you find an abnormal or, or, or a, a reading exceeding the standard, you immediately try to repeat it. So they did this with one laptop. They opened a single laptop, and they tested and they found when they touched the device to the laptop, it exceeded the code six. Now, instead of opening a second laptop to see if they could repeat it, they closed the laptop and did not commit that particular experiment again for the rest of the day. They then went to the high school after three o'clock when all the, all the students with all their little devices were gone home and measured there. So I would submit that this particular test was flawed and perhaps intentionally. However, they did let that reading show. To their credit, they didn't fake it. However, the school board took four months to let it known, let it be known. It was the number one issue in the Simcoe County newspapers. It was the number one issue at every school meeting I was at. And they never told us. We had to find out. Brian, you have a comment? Yeah, I have a comment. It's a really rhetorical question.
question, but your career as an investigative journalist and my career as a scientist, the thing that I fear most is being wrong because that's what we do. We try and be right. Why do you think some of these people that you reported to us don't have that same sort of fear? You may not have an answer. You know, my thoughts on why they don't do it are, are my own. I, I don't really don't know. Only that um, perhaps somebody who's reached the, the pinnacle of the public health department is more political and bureaucratic than they are medical anymore. And what they, 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 they value more than is hierarchy. This is, and this is again, my only opinion and my, my sense of it. Um, but it's a fact. And I, and I have uh, said these things, which could be actionable. And I would be happy in any day to stand before a judge and show the evidence. Any other comments, questions? Absolutely. I have a clean copy over here. I'd mark this one up. It's my old, my old habits as a journalist. Oh, yeah. It's uh, just over there. Yeah. yeah, you can, you can you send, if you want to send it, you can send it. it. Yeah. Then we, then other people can see it. Well. Sure. I'll, I can officially great. submit it. Absolutely. And, and Russell can give you the, uh, the email address for send it. Uh, you had said you might have some other comments. No, just the one about the rhetorical comments. question. No. Okay. I'm not a member panel. I just actually, uh, I, I, that's the only comment. But, Thanks for admitting it. Uh, well, rhetorical uh, remarks, though, I think should not go unchallenged. I have a, a journalist for a son, so. I'm... You're welcome to challenge any of the facts, and I'd be happy to represent them. No, I just, just wanted to challenge you on the question. Had they, had they read it? Well, you couldn't expect a panel not to have read it. A facetious remark. It may have been off script, and I apologize if it offended you. That's all right. Clarify something about that report. Uh, it looks like this is a peak field measurement with the probe in direct contact with uh, the intent. There, if you read but that report, this, like, yeah. Just let me finish. Whereas safety code six is whole body exposure and for time average over time. So uh, I don't see that this is that this peak measurement measured very close to antenna is necessarily in conflict with safety code six. If you measure the field very close to the antenna of a cell phone, you get field levels that are far above safety code six. That measurement doesn't really apply to some people. Um, that's an we excellent get to, question. We can discuss this offline. I just no, it's not necessarily discuss it offline because then I can answer it very quickly. If you read through the report, it, this was discussed. They used a device that kept the, the, me, the, um, uh, the measurement uh, tool a certain distance from. So even though they touched it, the actual measurement device was a certain distance away. And secondly, the comments uh, in there, uh, there are comments from the uh, school board superintendent uh, where they did discuss the fact that it, yes, it had exceeded the measure, the engineer who did the measurement admitted that it had exceeded. And then he began to belittle it to say a child would have to hold the computer on his head to have any effect. And I don't believe safety code six has any disclaimer that if you exceed it, as long as you don't touch it to your head, you're okay. Measurement very close to the antenna is not whole body exposure. I don't want to argue with them. Sure, it's where the it's where their fingers touch the keypad is where they measured. Right. Yeah. Okay, we have one last video. Thank okay. you all. Thank, thank you very much.